had Virginia were up as many as 17 lost in overtime on the weekend. They need some wins to improve their resume. Jeff Bizdelic under fire a little bit right now in Winston Salem. Wake finishing 13 and 17 or at the moment 13 and 17 on the season just 6 and 10 in league play. But this is a Wake Forest team Sean if they get it going they can play with some of the big boys. Well, some of these young guys are starting to come on. You mentioned Thomas and those Trojan told us right away he was concerned about Thomas and his ability to score the basketball last three games averaging about six points per game and nine rebounds per contest. So he's a freshman that's starting to play more like a sophomore for Wake right now. Foul on James Paget, Maryland in the white uniform. Wake in the black uniforms the first of two games tonight on ESPNU with Florida State and Clemson still to come births in the quarterfinals on the line Harris coming off a 29 point game on the weekend against Virginia Tech misses his first attempt and the rebound is down to Maryland Maryland out rebounding the opposition by almost 10 boards per game this season this is Wells number 32 he's really become the leader of the team Lob inside and sniffed out by Arno Adalamoto of Wake. Well, turnovers have been an issue for Maryland and a big part of why they've had inconsistency throughout the course of the season and their opening possession, forcing it rather than being patient and finding a good clean look. They've used about three different players in the point guard spot this year. Seth Allen, Keyshawn Howard, who started tonight. Nick Faust, who's really more of an off guard. Harris the kick. Makai is open and it rattles out. On the offensive glass, Thomas misses the putback. Yeah, rush the second chance opportunity, and that's the fear of Alex Len and what Alex Len can do to you around the basket. It's not just about blocking shots, right. it's altering it just by his presence. Len 7-1. Long wingspan, about 30 pounds heavier than he was when he got to College Park. Left hand for Padgett, the senior, no. And over the back, a foul on Len. Well, Alex Len so raw last year. He's put on weight. He's gotten better, as everybody knows. He's talked about as a potential lottery pick in the NBA. Yet, from night to night, he still sometimes kind of leaves you wanting a little bit more. Yeah, consistency and effort, consistency and toughness is one area where he still has to grow and mature as a player. Uh, but the, the skill set is there. The understanding of the game, the fundamentals, his footwork, it's at a very high level. A three from the corner, an air ball for Cody Miller McIntyre. To back come the Turks, led by P. Sean Howard. He's had so much trouble making shots in there for his defense, as Mark Turgeon has started him on C.J. Harris tonight. And he's failed to score four of the last five games. Glenn kicks it to Faust. And finally, somebody puts the ball in the basket. Two minutes and 15 Boy, seconds in. And you see why Len is so valuable out on the floor. He can survey the defense, read where they're at, and find the open shooter, especially on that diagonal whip pass that we just saw. Harris using the screen, and he knocks it down for three. C.J. Harris. Honorable mention all ACC the senior CJ Harris averaging better than 15 points per game and he's at that stage of his career any game could be his last so you know he's come out with a lot of urgency tonight. Well that's why off the top of the broadcast tonight we had to focus in on Harris and the stabilizing force with all these young players take some of the pressure off of them. You're going to see a lot of screens we've seen it already in two possessions multiple screens to try to get him open. Adalamoto defended by Len. And a low pass by Devin Thomas squirts through the legs of Mackay out of bounds. And Harris is ability. Watch him work off this screen. Then he catches it. He's going to receive the screen. Enough spacing. You've got to be there on the back of the screen, or especially if it's Harris, your hand has got to be up and showing hard immediately on that dribble. Charles Mitchell, Mitchell into the game for Maryland, a freshman out of Atlanta, a terrific rebounder, number zero. And that's going to be a held ball. A tie-up right there. The arrow will keep it at this end of the floor with the Turks. Well, anytime Len puts the ball down on the ground, you, you can spring that double team on him and come quickly. You can cause some problems for him. 
I think for him, the important thing would be to throw it back out, then repost deeper in the paint, and then no dribble go up to the rim. And at times, still more comfortable stepping out facing the basket. He's yep. got skills away from the basket as well. It's one of the things that makes him so tantalizing at the next level is he's a 7-1 guy with some perimeter skills, still trying to work on improving the inside skills. But we've seen at times throughout the course of the season that Duke game, he came out with a sense of purpose. Yeah. And he went after Mason Plumlee yeah. immediately and showed a level of toughness that we haven't seen out of him over the long haul of the college basketball season. Long jumper and right on cue, stepping out and a little bit of a delay on the signal, but it is going to be a three for Alex Len. And that's his first three of the season. It's nice when you have a seven foot one center that can stretch <laughs> the defense. Yeah. Now switches out on the hedge, recovers. Miller McIntyre passed up the open look into Devin Thomas. Wake playing unselfishly, but might have been better off shooting the ball a little bit earlier in that possession. A little too unselfish on that possession, but Maryland struggle this season for the Demon Deacons. For more on Jeff Bizdelic and the Deeks. Janine Edwards was in the wake huddle, Janine. Yeah, Dan, you know, one thing they've worked on all week, as we see that bucket go in by Harris, they've worked on spacing out Maryland because they don't want to get in one-on-one -on -one confrontations with them. And so far, Bizdelic is pleased with their spacing and the way they're moving the ball. But he wants them to take more shots. They feel that they've given up some opportunities to make baskets. Yeah, and I, and I love what Janine's saying right there. The balance within their offense, all five starters have got a shot attempt up for Wake Forest, but they've been a little bit over unselfish in the early stages of this game. Second chance points, you've got to power through, you've got to try to finish those at the rim when you have them, and they've been a little bit over pass happy in the early stages of this game. And Charles Mitchell might have just done the same thing for Maryland down there, tried to find Len when he looked like he had a layup, and Mitchell goes to the bench, and Shaquille Clear, a 6'9", 265-pound freshman from the Bahamas, number 44, into the game of the Terps. And right now with Seth Allen, and that means Nick Faust has shifted over to guard C.J. Harris, landed with a rejection, his second of the night already. So he's got two blocks and his first career three, less than five minutes into the game. Allen, a guy that Mark Turgeon says needs to score for Maryland to be good. Here's clear inside, rejected. Devin Thomas with a block. Miller McIntyre the length of the court high off the window and back come the Turks. That last possession he had such a great look underneath but then squared up his shoulders rather than taking his shoulder into the defensive player and finishing up over the top for the Turks. Wells finds Faust. And he misses the three off the glass bodies on the deck and back comes Wake. Miller McIntyre, who did not start the last two games at the point, had a case of strep throat. Madison Jones came in, played well, and then started a second game because he played so well in the first. But Miller McIntyre back in there tonight is Adala Moto, freshman from Cameroon, knocks down the jumper. Yeah, first made field goal for him in the last three games. Now he came into this one 0 for 8. And Mary, uh, Wake Forces have to, has to have a balance offense tonight. Yeah, you want to see everybody score, but you, 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 got, you got to be able to hit those wide open, uncontested looks when you have them. Bounce pass kicked out of bounds. Still Maryland ball. Let's uh, show you what's going on here with the ACC tournament in Greensboro. Boston College got 41 from freshman Olivier Hanley today to beat Georgia Tech. Where is he from? He's from Aylmer, Quebec. Oh, is that a Canada? <laughs> it is. That buys them a matchup with the top seed of Miami tomorrow afternoon. NC State over Virginia Tech. Richard Howell, a big game. Virginia and NC State about 2 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN2. That is a tremendously important game as Mitchell gets the basket. Uh, UVA seen as a bubble team. And uh, they get a tough quarterfinal matchup with NC State, maybe with their tournament hopes on the line. Well, the focus, obviously, when you're trying to slow down Virginia at the offensive end, it's got to be on Harris. Uh, but for NC State, it's got to be on cohesiveness. Uh, I think yeah. that's a team that has so many great parts. And throughout the course of the season, at times, we've seen them play for stretches of 10, 15 minutes within a half where they look like they're the best team in the country. Mm -hmm. But then they've been unable to sustain that, specifically at the defensive end of the floor. You saw Alex Lana getting a rest. Jake Lehman with the ball into the game for the first time for Maryland. Remember, NC State was picked preseason top five in the country and picked to win the ACC. They wound up finishing fifth in the ACC. 
Allen with a shot fake, and the lefty floats it up and in, and count the basket. The two officials kind of looking at each other. Les Jones taking charge, calling it a block, and the basket is good. And here comes the drive right at you. And yes, still sliding sideways on that. A good call and a great finish. And you mentioned the need and the desire to have Allen score. He brings a good energy to Maryland's offensive approach. Freshman out of Woodbridge, Virginia, with a three-point play. There are, between these two teams, Sean, there are ten freshmen, six on a wake, four on Maryland, getting regular minutes. And that's why we've seen inconsistency from Maryland's side of things and then the inability to win on the road for Wake Forest. A lot of times freshmen don't handle those environments, especially in conference play. Faust pushed off, and it gets called for the offensive foul. And Faust is going to head to the bench as Des Wells checks back in. On the drive, that's an easy one. Now you you extend out your elbow right in the defensive player's chest and create space for you to elevate up and try to knock down a shot. Fizzles could be on top of that one. So Faust takes a seat. Allen and Wells in the backcourt right now for Maryland. The Turks lead Wake by four. Thomas wanted the repost, but they didn't give it to him. When he had that ball down on the block and he threw it back out, he was trying to reestablish post. And I think right now with Len on the sideline, you've got to go through Thomas because I think he has a quickness advantage. He can turn and face, rip through, and try to get to the iron. Yeah, Thomas, 6'9", 240. Clear who's guarding him, 6'9", 265. Is Logan Aaronhall, a senior, a transfer out of Albany, comes in for the first time. He's a, a three-point shooter. Emmett Roundtree inbounding for Wake. Both teams going pretty deep in the early going right now. Madison Jones into the game as well for Wake. And there's another extra pass from a big guy who's three feet from the basket. You and there's a Maryland turnover. You have to want to score if you're Thomas. So far, he doesn't want to score. Madison Jones does. Madison Jones. And I like his game. He is aggressive. I call him a chaser at the defensive end of the floor. He'll chase you all over the place. He is all energy all the time. Opened up some eyes the last couple of games when he got the start. Wake Bench wanted to travel there. Didn't get the call. Wells puts it on the deck. Pull up to the baseline. Tough shot that he knocks down. And that upper body strength gives him the ability to bounce off defensive players. He wide open underneath and just poor awareness that time by Madison Jones though for Wake Force. Kavanaugh was on the block with nobody around him. Kavanaugh gets it inside. Had the shot altered, and Allen down with a rebound. We're kind of seeing a, a microcosm of the problems that each of these teams has had this year. Clear. Doesn't get the bounce. Kavanaugh down with a rebound. Part of coaching these days with so many teams so young, so many freshmen are getting so many minutes. Jones stripped of the ball. SEC Championship that year. He is the director of player development right now for Wake Forest. Part of a great tradition. Look at those numbers. That's not a misprint. 35.7 points per game in the ACC tournament that year. For more, here's Janine. Hey, guys, I had a great chat with Randolph yesterday. I asked him what he remembers about that game, and he said he all he remembers was in the background hearing Coach Dean Smith screaming to the refs, he can't do that. That's taunting. And, of course, he didn't get fouled for it. So, But he did tell me that with C.J. Harris just breaking his record for the most three-pointers in a game, he went six for six the other day, he has now jokingly challenged Harris to break his tournament record of 107 points wow. total. I don't know if we'll see that, but he said, hey, man, go break that, and then you'll be somebody. Well, Blake would clearly have to go deep in his ACC tournament to give him a chance, and I think that would be a big surprise here in Greensboro this year. Back to the action with Alex Lynn back into the game right now for Maryland. Devin Thomas is on the bench for Wade. Screened by Mackay, who's been quiet so far tonight. 
He's their second leading scorer, almost 14 points per game. Harris around and out. Loose ball rebound down to Jake Lehman. Maryland defeated Wake twice during the regular season. It blew him out the first time, 86 to 80. And then the second time was a closer game, 67 to 57. As Mark Turchin, as he often does, makes a number of substitutions with three new players checking in. How about that 67% field goal shooting for Maryland in the first game, and then Des Wells just took matters into his own hands in the second game. Yeah, we haven't seen any kind of rhythm or flow like that here for either team. I mean, both these teams right now are having just the inconsistencies in their, their shot attempts, their short army shots, especially Wake Forest underneath. They're afraid right now to get their shot blocked. And you got to play through and extend up to the ring. Miller McIntyre with a miss. Wake is just four for 15 from the floor. Faust behind the back. And another Maryland turnover. They're fifth already. C.J. Harris and Pishon Howard does a nice job to slow him down. Because of how we're getting back in defensive transition, now you're forcing Wake Forest to find something in their half court set. Maryland's so good at defending in the half court. Harris, long jumper is true. He's got seven of their 11 points early in this game, and I think they've got to continue to go through him until somebody else has that look and that demeanor of, hey, coach, give me the ball, I want to yeah. score. Uh, just keep riding Harris as often as you can. Look at Des Wells. Stops on a dime yeah. at the free throw line and knocks it down. They have a pretty good two-man battle between Wells and Harris tonight. Howard is defending Harris right now. Long jumper no for Mackay, but stepping out of bounds is Faust, and that'll give it back to Wake. Harris once again receiving the ball surveying where the defender is bouncing back the balance the body control and strength we see at one end and then we see it at the opposite end. okay Harris you want to do it <laughs> I got that in my bag as well Mr. Wells says sometimes you just got to tip your cap to a couple of guys who made great shots great moves they're on each other right now Wells defending Harris on this possession Devin Thomas says return for Wake, slipping around Lynn, and he lays it in. Yeah, and that has been there from the start of the game. Right? Thomas hasn't had the confidence to do it. Now it comes back off the bench. Maybe that's a good sign of things to come. And C.J. Harris called for the foul on the drive by Des Wells. So reading the defense, they're not going to bring the double team, so you know you're going to be isolated. Feel where the defensive player is. Use your footwork and your athleticism to spin off of them and finish. It's tough to block a shot when they're standing behind you. <laughs> Lennon 7 1, Thomas at 6 9. Lennon sophomore, Thomas a freshman. Meanwhile, this Des Wells CJ Harris matchup getting really interesting as Len misses a 12 footer. Wells is like a fullback playing basketball sometimes. He just drives to the basket with everything he's got. Jones didn't want to take the long jumper inside. Thomas. Whatever they told him when he went to the bench, <laughs> he is a different player right now. Same situation, different block. Read the defense, slip underneath, go ahead and finish and give yourself a potential opportunity for an N1, but maybe even more important, that's two personal yep. fouls on Len. And Len has gone to the bench. All of a sudden, Devin Thomas is engaged in this game as Len sits down. Left it way short, and a foul going against Wake. It'll be on to Mackay. How do things change now for Mark Turgeon and Maryland with Len on the bench, maybe for the rest of the half? And right now, Mitchell in there is the biggest guy that Maryland's got. Well, I think how it changes, it makes them even smaller, and it takes away a little bit of their rebounding edge, which has been so important to their success when they have played well. And if I'm, if I'm Wake Forest, I, I look at the two-man action between Thomas and Harris. He shot Howard, fouled on the drive. So often we see coaches see something and then they go, okay, well, that's worked on a couple positions. Let's try something else now. Right, right. No, 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 no. Just keep working it until it doesn't work it any more. <laughs> and so Mark Churchill will have to make do without Len for a while now. Charles Mitchell, 6'8", 260. So he's got a big body in there right now. James Paget is the other big guy. 
And you, again, you can use those big bodies against them. I mean, you don't want to pound into them on the block. You're not going to get anywhere. But you can feel them, and we've already seen Thomas in his athleticism where he can get around guys yep. underneath. Let's check in with Janine. Well, guys, and what did Mark Turgeon say to us when we met with him before the game? Devin Thomas got us in foul trouble last time. We cannot let that happen again. And here he sits with Alex Len on the bench next to him in two fouls. He doesn't want to go down that road again. And Padgett defending him right now. Harris, no. Rebound Faust. So concerned about transition. You're seeing every shot attempt. There's at least three going back, sometimes four for Wake Forest. Wells, the drive, the baseline floater not there. Off the fingertips of Mitchell to Padgett, and he draws the foul on his way up. So we'll step aside. The big story right now. Terps by two in the early going here with the Greensboro. Dan Schulman, Sean Farnham, Janine Edwards. You go to a team's practice, you see them work on offense, you see them work on defense. There's another area that teams always work on, and it's important. They work on inbounds plays, and we've seen that pay off tonight. You want to do the unselfish, selfish play? Set a screen. And, and that's what you see Mitchell do. You see him come up and set the screen. Now watch the defense. They have to react. They have to know where the man coming off the screen is. So then you slip that screen. You find the open spot, the soft spot of the defense, and you're able to finish underneath. Then good execution on the out of bounds underneath. And as a team, you kind of hope to get somewhere between six to eight points per game in those out of bound underneath opportunities. You can see Maryland with only 14 shot attempts. They've turned it over five times so far tonight, and turnovers have been a big problem for them over the course of the season. Wake not shooting the ball well. Wake's only gone to the free throw line once, and that last foul was on Travis McKay. McKay's got two fouls now and hasn't scored a point in this game. And he's on the bench right now. Alex Len remains on the bench for Maryland with two fouls. And as the senior James Paget heads to the line. And that's the first miss from the free throw line for Maryland. But going back to set the screens, get yourself open. In my career, I tried to set as many screens as I possibly could. The only problem, partner, was I couldn't finish. <laughs> I just, after a while, they stopped giving you the ball? No, I just kept setting screens. <laughs> One of two for Paget. Let's go to Janine. Well, guys, the one thing Mark Turgeon was not happy about in that last timeout was his guys are not running their offense. They're taking shots a little too quickly, like within the first five seconds of the shot clock. They're not making Wake Forest guard them long enough. He wants to see a little more patience. I think right now, Harris wants Janine to continue to give updates. <laughs> Every time, Janine, you, you give us an update, Harris hits a shot as yeah. soon as you start talking. Exactly, exactly. He's got more than half of Wake's points, and the Demon Deacons have tied it against favored Maryland. Remember Maryland's predicament right now, as Des Wells is going to head to the line. I think Harris got called for the foul. Maryland, 20 and 11 on the year, just 8 and 10 in lead plays. You look at Harris freeing himself up, losing Faust and knocking down the shot. Beautiful staggered double yeah. screen there. For Maryland to make the NCAA tournament, Mark Churgeon knows this. They've got to get a lot accomplished here. It's not enough to win one. It's probably not enough to win two. They're going to have to beat. They're going to have to win two, maybe three, maybe win the whole thing. I think maybe three or four. Three I mean, or four. They've yeah. got to get to the finals yep. to give themselves a chance. I mean, the large bid and the, the pool of teams that we're looking at is primarily the entire SEC. And then a couple of teams around them. The Baylors of the world we're looking at. Where do they fit into this picture? You know, Arizona State could have maybe pulled off the upset today and knocked off UCLA, and then maybe they would have been back on the bubble, but instead they lost, so they're off. So some good things going on around the country. Sustained consistency and a couple wins could put Maryland back into the discussion. If Maryland wins this game, they advance to the quarterfinals, and they would take on the two seed in the ACC, a probable one seed in the NCAA tournament. That's the Duke Blue Devils, and the coaching staff has assembled to watch this game. Remember, Duke lost to Maryland. Uh, just uh, about three weeks ago, but Maryland needs some big-time quality wins if they're going to get an at-large. Madison Jones with a reverse. First things first, though, Maryland can't be thinking about Duke right now. they got to be thinking about Wake, giving them a battle. Screen by Mitchell. He slips it. Faust off to Allen, now into the big guy. Mitchell draws a triple team. Ball is still loose and finally picked up by Miller McIntyre. Harris steps into a three. 
You're gonna need a timeout if you mark Turgeon. And he's taking one. You're not running offense. And meanwhile, your opponent's playing with confidence. Harris does it again from the outside, but just great execution overall. You see Harris, NBA range, in transition. He has no hesitation. This is a young man that plays with great confidence. You see it on his face. You see it in his body language. And Wake Forest, they're not worried about who they would play in the next round. They're just focused on trying to do all they can to get there right now. And C.J. Harris trying to make sure this is not the last time he puts on the Wake Forest uniform. Well, it's coming, the day you've all been waiting for, Selection Sunday. Coverage on ESPN starts with a bracketology at 3 Eastern, and at 6, Sports Center provides wall-to-wall -wall coverage of the brackets as they are announced, and at 7, the experts break it down with two more hours of bracketology. Who's in, who's out? Selection Sunday on ESPN and also live on Watch ESPN. C.J. Harris with 13 of Wake's 23. And the Demon Deacons up four on the Terps. And Maryland continues to play without Alex Lynn, who's been out several minutes already after picking up his second foul. Wells to Lehman. Lehman to clear. Jump hook is good by the player that Mark Churchill describes as his favorite player to coach. Came in raw, needed a lot of coaching, a lot of teaching. But as hard a worker as they have on the team, and Coach Turgeon feels he's made great strides this year. And it comes through commitment. Commitment to the program, commitment to yourself to want to be better. So often we see kids come in that maybe are a little more polished off, and they don't feel like they've got to commit quite as much. Deep one by Harris. Almost got the bounce. Again, Maryland defeating Wake by 26 and by 10 of the two regular season meetings, but trailing by two here 15 minutes into the game. Mitchell and a foul. Good recognition. Hard double team on the on ball screen, and then you force rotation. It's a scramble after you get past that initial double team. That comes with patience and poise. Foul on Adalamoto, his second. Charles Mitchell defeated the line to shoot. Mitchell, 6'8", freshman from Atlanta at the line for two. That foul call made by Carl Hess, who was back here for the ACC tournament after not working this tournament last year here in, in, in this state. It's a fairly big story. Uh, folks around the country may recall that Carl has tossed out Tom Gugliotta and Chris Corciani from an NC State game last year in Raleigh. And really, for NC State fans, kind of became public enemy number one for a while. Did not work the ACC tournament last year. He is back this year, although he's not working at an NC State game tonight. <laughs> NC State fans know who he is, given him the glare. It remains to be seen. I would assume he's going to work tomorrow. I would assume he's not going to work an NC State game tomorrow, although who knows. But he is back working the ACC tournament, which he had worked for many, many years, Sean, until last year. Well, a great position. Do your work early. So often we see players not want to work early, not post up hard early. And that time, deep post position by Makai, who had gone to the bench, not been playing well, 0 for 2 from the field. He comes back in and immediately establishes his presence. And the execution got a lot better for Wade right when Devin Thomas made those two baskets. Ever since then, they've been crisper and more assertive offensively. And they're stepping it up at the defensive end as well. Seven turnovers now for Merrill. Thomas, tough catch. Nice feed. And the lay-in for Miller McIntyre. Howard's a sensational defensive player, but when you stand straight up and you only watch the ball, you lose vision of your man. And that time, a great backdoor cut and a beautiful dump-off pass by Thomas. Largest lead of the night for Wake, and Mark Turgeon going to go to his bench again. Padgett lost it. And Jones fouled by Allen. Well, it's pretty easy to play good defense if your opponent isn't going to take shots. And they're going to turn it over and give you an opportunity to get out in the open floor and run. You know, and Mark Turgeon, when he talks about his team, says, I know we're young, but I feel good about the direction that we're going in. We're making progress. But, boy, when you turn the ball over so much, you just don't give yourself a chance at the offensive end. And right now, multiple possessions, back-to-back -back possessions, where they've turned the ball over. And you're deep. Then, therefore, too, also, when you have those type of turnovers and stay in bounds and your opponent gets it, you don't get to set up your defense. Yep. You're scrambling from the start. 
Wake Forest has turned those eight Maryland turnovers into nine points. They lead by five. Again, wide open underneath. This time, it's Thomas on the assist from Adalamoto. There's so many things. It is a clinic, an absolute clinic in the half court set right now. Maryland is playing flat footed and they are not answering the bell. And Wake Forest is ringing it. Boy, did they need that. Seth Allen knocks down a three. Three point basket. Seth Allen. Stems the tide a little bit. Maryland back within four. And now Allen knocks it free. And a foul is committed by Jones of Wake. So. All right, Anish, thank you very much here. Wake Forest trying to pull off an upset, leading Maryland by four, 29-25. Championship week presented by Dick Sporting Goods. This is the ACC tournament from Greensboro, North Carolina. Jeff Bizdelic, the head coach of Wake, kind of on the hot seat, under fire a little bit here locally in recent weeks. A disgruntled fan took out an ad in the student paper, and then a group of fans took out an ad in the Greensboro News and Record, the local paper here today. There's a fire Bizdelic campaign among a certain disgruntled fans. It's his third year, 13 and 17, 6 and 10 in the league. It's a very young team. They have some talent. You can see the potential. You've seen it tonight from the young players. But uh, Coach Pizdelic finds himself uh, in the crosshairs of some Wake Forest fans right now. Well, and the question becomes, do you believe enough that he'll be able to surround these young freshmen that he has in this program with the, the quality of player that's necessary for this program to move forward? Because uh, some of these parts are really good. We see Thomas already. And of course, such a great tradition here. I mean, the guys sitting in the studio for us tonight on ESPNU, uh, Dino Gaudio knows all about that. Skip Prosser before him. You know, we've seen Randolph Childress, Tim Duncan, Chris Paul. I mean, they've had some great players. They've had some great teams. Rusty LaRue, another uh, terrific player in his day for Wake. I mean, there was a time when, uh, and, and Wake obviously, Sometimes they're at a competitive disadvantage recruiting when you go against the likes of Duke and North Carolina. It's tough with, uh, with programs of, of that stature. But Wake has had some terrific teams over the years. Well, and as this conference evolves, I think it's going to only drive the pressure that much more up. When you talk about Notre Dame coming in next year, Syracuse, Pitt, and the landscape yeah. of the ACC is changing. And, you know, this, this door of conference realignment, it, it's not closed yet. Jumper no for Mackay, rebound for Len, back in there with two fouls with less than three minutes left in the first half. Faust takes the bump, and the foul before the shot, so it'll be uh, still two shots, double bonus for Maryland. And what this game comes down to so far in the first half is the turnovers and the type of turnovers that we're seeing. Uh, they, there's eight turnovers for Maryland, but seven of them have been on steals. Which means those are those are not dead ball turnovers where you can get back, establish your defense, and instead we started to see Wake Forest build confidence. Confidence leads to assists. In the first 12 minutes, just one assist for Wake Forest. In the last five, they have six assists. And the struggles at the point guard position are one, just one of the reasons why Mark Turgeon has used 14 different starting lineups this year. This is the 32nd game. 14 different starting lineups. 10 different players have started. And whether it's Faust, who you're looking at right now, Keyshawn Howard, or Seth Allen, none of them right now is, is really ideally suited for the point guard spot. They've got a freshman coming in, Roddy Peters, next year, who they've got some very high hopes for, but they need steadier point guard play if they're going to take that next step. What do we always hear this time of year? In the NCAA tournament, conference tournaments, it comes down to guard play, and that's why, you know, you have concerns if you're a Maryland fan about this team. Thomas misses, and it is out of bounds to Wake. Lynn was in the game on offense, Went out of the game when Maryland went back to defense. Mark Turgeon wants to try to avoid him picking up his third. Chase Fisher into the game for Wade. Well, and that's just poor execution. You, you run out of bounds on the catch, and you got to know where you are and have an awareness on the floor. The pass kind of led him in that direction, but from the get go, that didn't look like guys were cutting and moving hard for Wake Forest. So Maryland with a chance to reclaim the lead here in the closing minutes of the first half. They led early. Wake went on a run, led by Devin Thomas and C.J. Harris. And there's a, another turnover. Nobody deflected that ball. Mark Turgeon can't even bear to watch. 
and just trying to do too much. Stay within yourself. Value the basketball, value the time and the possession on the clock. Final two minutes, you're down by one. No need for a home run type play right there for Maryland. Fisher's got to get stronger with the ball, though. I mean, he, he steps out of bounds, comes down the next possession, and almost th throws it away on an entry pass to the wing where there's a hard denial. Right now, both coaches going a little bit deeper into their bench because some key players have 2,000 in this game, so they're not in there right now. No Harris. Right now for Wake, and he's been their big scorer. And Thomas is fouled. You got to give Thomas an A for effort, especially the last 10, 12 minutes or so. He's working hard out there. Well, and as Janine reported, it was the one player that Mark Turgeon really pointed out to us that has the ability to impact the game. And Thomas, when he plays with a high motor, it's, it's a reason why you believe that some of these young pieces at Wake Forest are going to help this program get back to where they want to see it is because of a player like Thomas. And he has continued to get more and more aggressive, more and more assertive, all ACC freshman team member. This is one area, though, that he drastically needs to continue and improve. Gets the bounce. Thomas is a 55% free throw shooter on the season. Let's go to Janine. Well, guys, I spoke to Coach Benzelic about Devin Thomas's free throw shooting because he was only shooting at about 44% earlier in the year. And he gave Thomas the analogy of making believe your body is a spring and sink down, coil down, and then use your knees to uncoil yourself and push yourself back up and let the ball come off your fingertips. And it has helped. And I'm wondering, Sean, if you noticed his technique, if he was able to do that. Yeah, simplifying the motion of the free throw and getting your body to move in sync, I think, is a big part of being consistent at the free throw line. And that's where Thomas has drastically improved. I wonder if he uh, asked his sister for help. Alyssa, the ACC Player of the Year in women's basketball in this conference. She plays for Maryland. What a drive by McConnell. Are they spacing the floor? The defense is caught hugging their man. And an easy finish for Wake Forest. And the momentum looked like it was starting to shift a little bit to Maryland a minute ago. Dez Wells. Dez Wells. And show patience, slow this thing down, really work this clock on this possession if you're Wake Forest. Fisher. Got it. Chase Fisher, the Fisher. sophomore out of Ripley, West Virginia, knocks it down. Wake by five and about seven seconds between the game clock and the shot clock. A well-executed first half for Wake Forest. They have come out after a sluggish start. Yep. They have answered the call. And just another... Uh, an unforced turnover, and Wake got a timeout called after they got possession. Jeff Bizdelic leaping onto the court to call that timeout to ensure that Wake would get the final shot of the half. A great job by Coach to be on top of that one because the jump ball, the possession arrow would go back to Maryland. Yep. They could have got the final shot in this half. Now instead, with a five-point lead, the opportunity to extend out this lead and this margin going into the half and watch the coach. Look at him. He's down in his stance. <laughs> Ball goes down on the floor and immediately timeout, timeout, timeout. Well, Jeff Bizdelic's got to be thrilled with the way that Wake has played the last 12 minutes or so, especially if they can add to the lead here in the last 15 seconds. Wake started slowly. Look at how much they've improved since, and Maryland continues. They're their own worst enemy tonight with the turnovers. For a majority of the half, Len has been on the bench, and I think that's been a big part of it because they've allowed the space out and feel comfortable and gain confidence going towards the rim, something that they were not feeling, at least in the early stages of this one. You got a chance to diagram a play. What do you want to see here for Wake? Well, Harris. Uh, you want to see Harris get something, and, and I, I assume they're going to try to flatten it out and then bring a late ball screen for Harris. Here it comes. Got the switch. Little stutter step, fade away on the baseline. 
And the first half comes to a close with Wake Forest trailing early. First half, C.J. Harris with 13 points, although Devin Thomas had two critical baskets midway through that first half that seemed to really turn the tide in Wake's favor. Ten turnovers, the big problem for Maryland. Howard is back at the point. One change as Lehman gets the start. Here in the second half for Maryland, Mark Turgeon goes smaller. Lehman starting instead of Padgett. Well, it could create better floor spacing for Maryland, but the key is not turning the ball over. Eight steals in the first half on those ten turnovers from Wake Forest made a big difference. Janine Edwards had a chance to talk to Mark Turgeon at halftime. Janine? Yeah, well, the Maryland coaches, as I had reported during one of the timeouts, were not happy with the impatience being shown by the Terrapins and just taking shots too quickly, not making Wake Forest work harder on defense, and just not getting the best shots up. And that's sort of been a broken record theme for Maryland all this season, as have the turnovers. The turnovers are killing them. Mark Turgeon not happy about that. They've got to slow down. They've got to, and they've also got to be a little bit more aggressive in grabbing for those loose balls. They're being just out-hustled by Wake Forest right now. You know, it's a great point, Janine. There were two or three times, Sean, in the first half when you saw a Maryland player kind of bend over at the waist for a ball on the floor, and a Wake player dove on the floor and wound up getting the ball. Well, there's a good hustle play by Wells, and it gives him an opportunity for a run out. Look at this passing and the finish by Wells. Wells. Sensational stuff from Howard to Faust to Wells. Defense leading the offense. In the first half, it was Wake Forest. Maryland's got to turn up their intensity, and they've got to replicate what they just did right there. If they have any chance of getting an NCAA tournament bid, they've got to win this one and at least a couple of more. Wells, coast to coast, draws the foul. Back-to-back -back possessions, though, where we've seen a very aggressive Maryland team out of the break, understanding what their coach was telling Janine at the break. You've got to make some of those hustle plays and toe that line, get back in, reestablish position, a beautiful behind the back pass. The defense clears out, and the finish easy for Wells. Can we hashtag this? Are we going to hashtag it? I think it's, I think it's got a shot. All right. Ryan Anderson had a good hashtag earlier this morning for Boston College. Yes, he did. Behind the back dribble and finish for himself. It's this one a behind the back pass for the dunk. And if Wells had finished this last one when he got fouled, he could have had a combo platter, back-to-back -back plays maybe in the top ten. I wanted to hashtag the entire game. I asked SportsCenter earlier on Twitter <laughs> if I could hashtag the entire game for Hamlin. <laughs> 41 points, an ACC tournament record for a freshman. The incredible part about that game, too, is Georgia Tech was leading 15 to nothing four minutes or four and a half minutes into the game, and Boston College won going away. Well, and 12 for 12 down the stretch, eight of them came from behind the three-point line. It wasn't like he was just shooting layups. A 6-0 run in about a half a minute for Maryland. So BC will get Miami tomorrow afternoon. NC State will get Virginia. Two of the quarterfinals are set. The winner of this game will play Duke. And the winner of our next game, Florida State and Clemson, will play North Carolina. The reverse for Thomas. Well executed yeah, by Thomas. the Demon Deacons. When Wake Forest is active at the offensive end, they have forced Maryland to defend and often lose track of their man because they're so concerned about where guys are cutting or how they're coming off the screens and they're getting high percentage looks in the paint. Len fairly quiet tonight, hampered by foul trouble. Did his first career three early in the game and Des Wells says, I can knock down a three as well. Des Wells taking over here in the second half. Well, they need offense and you look Mr. Wells way first and Maryland's doing a nice job from behind the arc. Now four of five from beyond the three-point mark. Terps have outscored the Deeks 9-2 here in the second half. Look inside. Thomas got held by Len. They didn't call it. Uh, Thomas strong enough to lay it in. That, that's a break for Maryland. Len looked like he grabbed the jersey of Thomas, but the officials didn't see it. Well, he's got nothing else he can do. And he's not defending early. He's had a tougher time with Thomas than the other big guys for Maryland have had. Now Len calling for the ball on the block. Jump hook short. Wake ball. Good defense by Thomas. Thomas in transition. Throws it out of bounds. Poor awareness in transition that time for Thomas. But great defense at the opposite end, making Len shoot the ball up over the top. And Lenz is not being strong enough. The coaching staff, the assistants yelling at him right now, you got to be stronger, and he does have to be stronger. 
again. When he got to Maryland, he was 7 to 1, about 220. He's now about 250. So he's put on 30 pounds in less than two years, trying to work on getting a stronger inside game. Any thoughts at the next level? You go play in the NBA, you might be a lottery pick, but you've got to be able to play with your back to the basket. Lehman misses the three. Lehman comes up with a steal. Faust. And a hold is called on Wells, I believe. It is going to be on Des Wells with a look of disbelief on his face. You see, in the open floor, you've got to throw this ball. Wells is wide open on the back side, and you don't give it up. And because of it, you get sucked in underneath the hoop. And Mark Turgeon, that's been the look we've seen on his face a lot. He tries, he's trying to stay positive. But then, yeah, but then he snapped back into it, you see? <laughs> Something you got to do when you got a young team, right? Thomas, bounce pass to the cutting Mackay. Thomas has done a lot of a little in this game. He's done a little bit of rebounding. He scored a little. Yep. And, and now he's distributing the ball. His third assist in this game, finding teammates. And a lot of those are coming off of him catching the ball in the paint and the defense having a react. Some pretty good interior passing at times by Wake tonight. Howard has it taken away from behind. Madison Jones comes up with a steal. Good probe to see, flatten out the defense, see if there's anything there, and then reestablish. I'd look to try to get C.J. Harris the ball in this one. And you want to get him a shot. Here he comes. Howard trying to stay with him. Thomas. And bothered by Len. Here's Wells again. Straight to the rim. Ooh. What a force he is. I think that one's better than the one we have. <laughs> he might get that combo platter. And another turn. And guys, he is such a force. You know, even the littlest of fans are noticing. He received a letter from a little boy saying that he wishes Dez could teach him basketball. And oh, by the way, it said great steal against Wake Forest. Well, Wells told me he hung that letter on his wall next to his Muhammad Ali poster, nonetheless, because he remembers being a kid and sending a letter just like that to Duke's Jay Williams and well said we just have to remember the impact that we can have on these young kids lives How about that great story Jay will are you watching he's probably back in the studios in Bristol right yeah. now Des Wells a fan and I'm sure a lot of fans of Des Wells after the season he's had for the Turks Mitchell a miss off the glass that was one of those blind look throw ups didn't know where they were on the yep. floor Kavanaugh in and out on the three, Lehman the tap, Mitchell the rebound, nearly threw it away. Maryland so much better in activity so far in this half, but we saw them play with great intensity and great focus early in the first half, too, and then they relaxed, and they allowed Wake Forest to get in their comfort zone. Nice two-man game, Mitchell to miss, Land the putback. Big basket for Lane as Maryland takes the lead again. The second-chance points have been hard to come by for Maryland and a nice job by Len on that last possession working strong and working hard to put himself in the position to get this rebound you're gonna see the shot come up on the strong side defensive rotation over Len kind of pushes his way to the opposite side of the glass able to finish did a good job not bringing the ball down too. kept it up high just the second offensive rebound of the night for the Turks meanwhile Harris the senior at the line he carried Wake Forest through much of the first half they're so comfortable at the free throw line. This is where he does a lot of his damage. 85% free throw shooter on the season. And yeah, Mark Turgeon said it was before the game. If Harris and Mackay get to the line, Wake's a good team. So, But they didn't have much choice as Harris went flying down the court in transition, and they had to foul him. He'll make them both. Devin Thomas has returned for Wake. Nick Faust and Shaq clear back into the game for Maryland. The free throw line has not really come and play all that much for Wake Forest, though. Only five attempts on the game compared to the 17 in which Maryland has. Wells on the bench right now. Faust misses the three. And the rebound of McCann. Tries to throw the home run pass and he overthrew his receiver as Miller McIntyre led his teammate too far. 
Well, maybe the most important conference tournament going on around the country this week in terms of bubble teams is the SEC tournament. You can make a case for Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ole Miss. So many teams with so much at stake down in Nashville right now. So there are going to be a lot of meaningful games in the SEC tournament. Jake Lehman with a miss. Well, that Tennessee game tomorrow is basically a play-in game to the NCAA tournament as far as I'm concerned. Alabama, Tennessee. Be a great contest. And I think Ole Miss needs to win at least one game. And Coach Kennedy's squad has consistently won over 20 games during his tenure, but not getting into the NCAA tournament. Yep. They had that feel about them. Early they did, yep. And yep. Marshall Henderson is, <laughs> well, <laughs> he'll blow your mind. Yeah, he's good TV, as yes. we say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when he's on the court, you're aware of it. When I saw Ole Miss at the Diamond Head Classic this year, I asked Coach Kennedy about him. What's it like, Coach? And he said, if I had any hair, I wouldn't have lost it. Logan Aaron Holtz. Layman to the bench. Des Wells. Des Wells back in. Mark Turgeon doesn't want to leave him out for too long. And Harris missed them both. 85% free throw shoot. Well, turnovers were a problem for Maryland in the first half. Here in the second half, six already for Wake Forest. Allen splits the defense and has it rejected up near the rim. Mackay got a finger on it. Now Mackay comes back up the court. Well, way to go climb the ladder and meet him up top. Mackay rotating over in the help side position. Wells on to Mackay. Aaron Halt, a tough matchup with Harris, who gets the shot off over him. And the rebound down to Allen. Allen, nice kick in the corner. Aaron Halt. And Harris must have gotten a fingertip on that shot. No rotation on the ball as it went up in the air. And Harris draws the foul at the other end. In the help side defensive rotation, you need to be able to challenge, and Makai does just that. That was going to be a monster slam, but instead, it's a monster block. And those are the little things that at the end of the game, you might, you might not remember that play in particular, but if that goes down as a, as a strong finish and dunk, all of a sudden now the fans get involved, the life of Maryland starts picking up, kind of like it did when Wells went to the rim and everybody started playing a little bit more intense at the defensive end of the floor. Instead now, everything's calm, everything's settled down, and Wake Forest is back at the free throw line. Harris makes the first, Lander returns for Maryland, clear to the bench. C.J. Harris, honorable mention, all ACC this year. Fifth in the league in scoring, the conference leader in free throw percentage as he gets a break. And Jones is back into the game for the Deeks. And you mentioned coming off that 29-point performance, 6 of 6 from behind the arc against Virginia Tech down the stretch of the regular season. He's averaging about 19 points per game already with 17, and we still got 13 minutes left to go. Over 1,600 points in his career. As Wells almost got caught with that ball. Uh, stuck to his side up around his shoulder almost got called for a travel now. He'll take a three, three point basket, yes. Not known as a long-distance shooter just 27 percent from beyond the arc on the season But Wells doing anything and everything to try to lead the Terps to victory Well, let's check in Mackay because he went down on the floor and when he got up It looked like he had taken a shot to the mountain and then he was slow in reacting and getting back out to Wells Which is why he was so open on the opposite side Now Mackay, the kick, and a three, the answer for Miller McIntyre as Wake goes back on top. The percentage of assists to made field goals real high tonight for Wake Forest, doing an excellent job distributing the basketball and finding shooters on time, on target, in a rhythm. 12 assists on 19 made baskets tonight. Len. Thomas trying to wrap him up, slow him down, and the ball is out of bounds, but it'll stay with the Turks. Bull's not given a whole lot of ground defensively to Len. No, he's been able to maintain, and he's not bouncing off, and Len's not being able to create any space as he tries to dribble. He's going nowhere with it. That's why I think if you're not going anywhere with it, just throw the ball back out, reestablish your post position even deeper. Atlanta quiet night, some foul trouble in the first half, but just two for four, five points, three rebounds tonight. Howard spins and draws the foul on Jones. 
Number three on Madison Jones and a P. Sean Howard. He's had a tough year uh, on and off the court. A guy who a couple of years ago looked like he might develop into a star. He's had trouble knocking down shots this year. Playing time has been limited. Back into the starting lineup the last few games, predominantly for his defense. Well, his field goal percentage, three point percentage, have dropped every single season that he's been in Maryland. And that's. That's usually the wrong trend. You, you want to see guys come in as a freshman, establish that bar. Okay, here's where I'm at, and now I'm going to get better. Uh, but as his career has gone on, he's diminished in all those areas. Shooting down in the 20s this year, 27% from the field, 23% from the three-point line. Makes one of two free throws, and it's a one-point game. Wells will sit. This will be brief. The next whistle will send us to the under-12 media timeout. And you can pretty much guarantee he'll be back in there when they come out of the break. And Harris is down also right, right. now for Wake Forest. So both those guys, we would anticipate yep. we'd see real quickly here. Thomas, nice pass inside to Makai. Thomas is slicing up Maryland's defense. When he catches the ball, for whatever reason, the help side just elevates. They stand straight up and they watch. And it's allowing his teammates to move and sneak in behind the back line of the defense. Good night for the freshman. You just saw there four assists tonight for the Wake big man. Faust with a drive all the way to the rim. No help defense for Wake. Not that time. A good job by Faust turning that corner and still remaining aggressive. It wasn't that long ago, Makai sent him packing. Got a good one here in Greensboro. The winner gets Duke tomorrow night in an ACC quarterfinal. Wake trying to pull off the upset over a Maryland team that defeated them twice during the regular season. Makai, boy, he knew exactly what he wanted to do as soon as he caught it. Misses the three. They've lost 11 out of their last 16 games, and that has got to be a concern for Tubby Smith and the Golden Gophers coming into Selection Sunday. Now, they still should be in, and they should be in comfortably because of the power and the depth this year inside yeah. the Big Ten. Len spins to the baseline, got hacked, and will shoot a couple as Thomas and Adalamoto try to figure out what went wrong down on the baseline. Well, that was a good cross-screen action that freed up Len, and he does a good job turning towards the baseline. So often we see in those bigs will be unaware of where they're at and want to spin back towards the middle. And when they do that, they Alex often go the into the defense. The fourth foul on Arnaud Adalamoto, the freshman from Cameroon. We worked on that one this afternoon. Arnaud, the Williams option, but Arnaud Adalamoto. The 12th lead change of the game. Maryland back on top. Lehman slipped, hits the deck. Wake couldn't take advantage. Wake has assisted on 12 of its last 13 field goals. And Thomas bothered at the rim by a couple of defenders. Harris picks it up, and it pays off as Jones lays it in to put Wake back on top. Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a foul potentially on Lynn. I thought there was an awful lot of contact underneath on that one, but Harris, smart, aggressive, attacking, making plays happen. They're looking for Lenmore. He draws the double team. Open is Aaron Hall, and that's what he does. 53 of his 63 made field goals this year have been three pointers. Played three years at Albany, scored over 1,100 points there, finishing off his career now with Maryland. Made the most of this year. I mean, really sure trying, to, trying to make an impact on a program. It's tough when you come in late in your career and try to bring, bring that chemistry and build that with your teammates. Out of bounds to Maryland. Well, you've got to have some faith in your teammate. You've got a double team situation right here. Here's where he's coming from. He's going to come all the way over onto this strong side, and when he does, He's going to find himself real open. The defense gets sucked in. There's not even a screen set. It's just great movement. And so often, when Lynn gets the ball, the defense watches. And that was a wide open, uncontested three point shot because of that double team down low. Lynn pushes off. 
Oh, and it's going oh, to go wow. on Kavanaugh. Oh, wow. That's not a good call. And, and I mean, such a clear two-hand shove, clear out by Len. And defensively, okay, you're trying to get into your man, and then watch, just a little push off right there. I, I don't understand how that is not called against Len. I mean, that is a two-hand shove. A big break for Maryland. Aaron Hall, quick trigger on the three, leaves it short. Des Wells getting ready to check back in for the Terps. He was out a little bit longer than we thought he would be. Having on the handoff, still plenty of time to shoot. And Harris the drive, and he draws the foul. This one is going to go on Lynn. Maryland foul charge to 25, Alex Lynn. And that's his third goal. Well, an important foul to pick up, and lucky that one at this end of the floor didn't go against him as well, because then there would have been four. Harris is starting to be aggressive, and when your offense is struggling and maybe you're not finding the same quality of shot, getting to the free throw line a great way to get it done, and Harris is starting to find his way to pick up some fouls and, and try to get himself back there. Defended by Howard right now. Screen by Kavanaugh, foul by Mitchell. And who is it once again being aggressive, drawing the fouls? That's now six team fouls against Maryland. One more, and they'll be one on one the rest of the way. Des Wells doing a little coaching out there on the court, trying to help Charles Mitchell with the ball screen defense. Here comes Allen for Faust. Hand off to Harris, he turns the corner. Good hands by Allen, and the Terps have it. Allen, off the back of the iron, in and out, wake ball. Great opportunity for Maryland, and they was unable to complete it. And now Seth Allen to call for the foul. And as you said, that's going to put them over the limit. That'll be the seventh foul on the Terps, and it'll be a trip to the free throw line from here on out for Wake. And this is where Harris starts to hurt you. It goes back to what Mark Turgeon was talking about getting to the free throw line, the importance of get, keeping Wake Forest off of this free throw line, in particular Harris. And again, Harris, the conference's leading free throw shooter, 85%, although he did miss two earlier tonight, four for six in this game. Well, and, and the thing that impresses me about Harris is picking and choosing the moments to attack. It's going to be an on-ball screen situations or what we saw in this possession, which is where it's a tap-out rebound, nobody's set. He realizes everybody's kind of scrambling and off-balance. You can draw that body contact and get to the free throw line. Made them both. Airman Hall back in. Logan, Aaron Hall. Very rarely do you see Harris in the half-court set in a non-on-ball screen situation aggressively attacking and drawing fouls. After a bit of a, a sluggish start through the first eight or ten minutes, this has turned into a terrific game. The winner vying for a spot in the quarterfinals tomorrow against the number two seed, the Duke Blue Devils. Good ball movement by the Terps. Len on the bench right now. Small lineup in the game. Wells, not this time. And Adalamoto down with a rebound. Makai baseline, and he draws the foul. So Travis Makai will head to the free throw. Well, what a difference in the second half for Maryland. They were just handing the ball to Wake over and over. What have they done better to control the ball here in the second half? Well, I think a big part of that Travis has McKay been better execution in their half-court set, showing a little bit of patience, playing out of the double teams that they're throwing on Len underneath the hoop. And they have been able to get out also because of their own turnovers and find some transition looks, something that they didn't have many of in the first half. Let's go to Janine for more. Well, guys, you mentioned turnovers, and one thing that uh, Coach Jeff Bezalik has been conscious of is the fact that the play has been a little bit sloppy as of late, concerned about the guy's fatigue level. And we did have one player, Cody Miller-McIntyre, Miller being attended to by the trainers 
for cramping up. They were actually massaging his calf muscles. But he told his guys during this last time out, guys, this is where it comes down to digging down deep and finding what's inside of you. Well, Alex Lynn just found <laughs> dug down deep, went up high, slammed it home, and the Terps back on top. And Dalamoto playing with four fouls. Nice spin. And now Len called for the foul. And that'll be four on him. So you make a great play at one end, the other end. You give it back up. And the defensive end of the floor. And his fourth personal foul and a good aggressive move underneath and cut underneath the rim. Bodies up. Easy foul. And the dollar motor to the free throw line. And now a tough decision. It looks like we know what Mark Turgeon's going to do. Charles Mitchell is at the scorer's table. Less than seven minutes left. Two-point game. Do you bring the big guy out? How long do you leave him on the bench? The to me, Derrick's you kind of see where this Charles game goes. Mitchell. It has been so tight throughout that if you can buy him enough time and get under that four-minute timeout, the under four-minute timeout, you give yourself a chance to get him back in, and then it comes down to offensive de defensive right. substitution potentially in the final minutes of this game. Less than seven minutes to go. Maryland with the ball and a one-point lead. Trying to beat Wake for the third time this year. The winner takes on Duke tomorrow night, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Keyshawn Howard for three. And a big smile on his face. We've talked about how much he struggled shooting the ball this year. An unlikely hero with a big shot for the Terps. This is the largest lead either team has had in the last 13 minutes. The drive by Mackay. Ooh. And before Mitchell crashed into him, there was a tie up, and the ball will stay with the wake. Well, Howard, we mentioned his struggles at the offensive end, just 23% on the season from behind the arc. A little misdirection, a little counterattack, and knocks it down you know that, that shot shows me some confidence and if you shoot the ball confidently mm -hmm. you give yourself such a better opportunity to make it kept alive by Adala Moto, and he draws the foul great work on the offensive glass by Arno Adala Moto. Well, you heard the, the sound of the shot clock expiring as that ball hit the iron and then just being aggressive underneath you put yourself in position Active hands, just wanting it more. That's what these tournament situations are all about sometimes. You know, you look at players and you say, okay, fine, we can break down stats. You and I can go through the numbers and try to determine, okay, how's this game going to play out? And in the end, it, the effort, the concentration, and the attention to the small details of the game often determine who wins. One of two, and Wake leaving some opportunities on the line. Now Faust out ahead of the defense. Oh! Tip back up and in by Howard. And again, that's that little extra effort. He could have anticipated John Faust Howard. finishing that and just watched. But instead, he went back and made a play. And the lead grows to five. Dalamoto, wild shot up off the glass, and it's an offensive foul. Seth Allen stepping in to take the charge, and that should be it for Dalamoto. Wake Forest, number 45. The previous possession, you're active and you're on the glass, and you get a trip to the free throw line, and that time you leave your feet. Moving forward instead of jump stopping and going straight up, straight down, and now one more active players for Wake Forest will sit down for the final five minutes and 25 seconds. We've got some small lineups in the game right now, really for both teams, relative to what we've seen most of the night. Only two big guys are Mitchell for Maryland and Thomas for Wake. And how quiet has Thomas been in the second half as far as getting the shot off and being aggressive and attacking around the rim? Howard checks the shot clock, still got 13. Wells, the kick to Faust. And the long rebound down to Harris. Full head of steam, a little out of control, and they turn it over. Now here comes Wells. Allen. Mitchell, count it. 
Charles Mitchell. The shot from the outside was so poor that that's what allowed the N1 opportunity for Wake Forest. In transition, you kick it out. You're expecting this is going to be a three-point shot on the iron, but instead it falls directly underneath the hoop. And Mitchell was standing right under the rim. The only way he would have got that ball is if it went through the hoop or airballed to him. Mm -hmm. The air ball is what he got, and he's able to finish and get to the free throw line. Mitchell, a guy who's lost over 20 pounds since he got to Maryland last summer. He rebounds at a tremendous rate, almost six rebounds per game in 16 minutes per game. And Maryland has extended this lead significantly, Sean, with Alex Lenz sitting on the bench the last two, three minutes. Well, that's what you want to. You want to get under the four-minute timeout. You want to extend out your lead, be comfortable. And as long as this lead continues to go in the right direction, you can keep Len on the bench. He hasn't done enough, by the way, to, to make it a mandatory right. factor to have him out sure. on the floor. Harris, no. Lame in the rebound. It's an 8-1 run right now for the Terps. A little more patience. Good cut by Lehman. Left it short at the rim. Well, if Wake Forest were to push there, they would have had a numbers opportunity. Lehman was down. Jones draws the foul on Lehman, and it will be shooting two. Jones not a particularly good free throw shooter, 49% on the season. So Wake Forest has done a nice job getting to the free throw line, uh, but they have got to make them down the stretch here. Madison Jones the line on shooting two. Two to go, the deficit seven. Another one of those freshmen that are starting to play better down the stretch for Wake Forest. And you can't leave points on the board. And we're going one for two, not good enough in these situations when you're trying to climb back into a game. As a team, just 11 of 19. Wake Forest at the line tonight. And Aaron Hall fouled by Harris, and Harris thought that Aaron Hall pushed. And yes, they've, they've tightened up their offense. They're setting better screens. They're moving better without the ball, not standing so flat-footed at both ends of the floor. But Wake Forest has made it easier on them. And, you know, we talked about the free throw line down the stretch. Wake Forest in the last three and a half minutes, three of eight at the foul line, and it's a seven-point game. Logan Aaron Hall at the line for Maryland. And we got a foul going against the Turks, I believe. Is it Wells? Yeah, it's Des Wells, I think. Got called for the foul. That's going to be the fourth on him as... Now Wake will go down and shoot free throws. It'll be two for Wake, double bonus. And now Alex Len is up off the bench and heading back into the game. Well, they got him under that four-minute timeout. And now you just bring him back out on the court. And if he fouls out, he fouls out. If you have opportunities like this, though, where you can get him in and get him back on the offensive possession, yeah. then if it's a dead ball situation, you can maybe foul him back out and substitute that offense to defense. Miller McIntyre with the line for 257% on the season. That's a big problem. You start reading off these percentages at the foul line. 49%, 56 57, 55. I mean, this, they don't have a lot of options as far as high percentage free throw shooters, and that's why Harris is so important in these situations. That's the guy, ideally, if you're Wake Forest, you want to send them. One of two. That's been the story recently for Wake. Still a lot of time in just a six point game. Len kicks it back out. Repost gets it back. Off the glass and good. Beautiful touch. Beautiful recognition and great patience by Maryland to get him the ball back on the block where he felt like he could get in an operational area to find success. And they've been uh, a lot more under control here in the second half offensively, making some good decisions. Harris frees himself just for a moment. Fisher. And the rebound down to Faust. And he wisely slows it down a little bit. Let's everybody else catch up. 
And I go right back to Len on the block and play off of him. I would not bring him out and have him set screens where he could potentially pick up his fifth foul. And he comes out to set another ball screen. The drive by Allen, and the lefty gets all the way to the rim. And all of a sudden, the lead grows to double digits after Wake fought back and forth, took the lead on several occasions here in the second half. Maryland has played its best basketball in the last few minutes. Harris in and out on the three. The shots are just not falling right now. Back-to-back -back possessions, wide open threes. And then an unforced error as Faust and Howard can't connect in transition, and they give the ball back to the Demon Deacons. Instead of being solid, there was a little bit more flair mm -hmm. on that dump-off pass, and I think that's what Coach Turge is talking about. Look, you're pushing the ball up the floor. You don't get lackadaisical. You don't just release the ball to the outside yeah. and watch it go out of bounds. And he just yelled at Nick Faust. You got to look at him. That's not his fault. And again, one of those situations, you got to know time and score and situation. They didn't need that. The point guard play, you've referenced it a couple of times in tonight's broadcast, how it's been a revolving door for Maryland all season long. So now that they're on defense, land to the bench, Mitchell back into the game. If you're Wake Forest down the stretch, I think you play through Thomas, get him the ball down low on the block, and have him aggressively attack. You see the numbers in the second half. Um, it's not a recipe for a win. Floater, not there. Wells down with a rebound, and a foul will send him to the free throw line. And you can tell who's winning by who races down to the other end of the court. And all five okay, Terps are already board. down to the free throw line, smelling the victory right now. Championship week is available anytime, anywhere on your computer, tablet, or smartphone with the Watch ESPN app or at WatchESPN.com. And tonight's game and the entire ACC tournament can be seen in stunning 3D on the ESPN 3D network. See, I had earlier today, I had Doris and Dave O'Brien on from here watching that game at the hotel, had yep. the watch app up and was watching the Big East tournament nice. on that. And tweeting all the while. Of course. <laughs> Quite a multitasker. You have to tweet. Yeah. You're a big tweet. No, you not tweet like you. Out. Not like you. No. <laughs> I was going off today. Lots of stuff going well, on. There's lots the going on. It's a, a great time of year for college basketball fans. How about Des Wells now? 21 points in the game. 15 of them here in the second half. Dave O'Brien and Doris will be back at it tomorrow afternoon for two quarterfinals. Miami into Boston College, then NC State and Virginia. We'll have Duke against, it looks like, Maryland. And then North Carolina against the winner of our next game between Florida State and Clemson. Howard with a reverse. He has had a really strong night. He has, but right now, the body language and everything about Wake Forest tells me they have no run left in them. This game is going to be over, and Maryland's going to cruise to a victory because they have just, their body language has just told me that they just don't feel any rhythm or any flow in this game. Yeah, Thomas with a lay-in, and Jeff Bizdelic will use that if they're going to get in at large. I think they do. I think they have to get all the way to the finals, and if they get to the finals, then they're going to be heavily in the discussion as far as an at-large berth in the NCAA tournament. Quality of victory late in the season. And now it's going to be a free throw competition for Maryland. And they're going to continue to foul, and they've got to make these shots. If they make just a couple, this game's going to be on. At the conclusion of this game, College Basketball Live scoreboard comes your way here on ESPNU. Maryland, 19 of 25, 76% from the free throw line. And Wake, just 12 of 21, 57%. One of the big differences in this game. And they continue to knock them down. And credit Maryland in their focus here in the second half. Uh, it started at the defensive end. A couple of those hustle plays that Janine was talking about when she spoke with Mark Turgeon at the break. Being aggressive at the defensive end of the floor, they set the tone early. Des Wells set the tone early in particular with those two dunks. Yep. And neither Harris nor Thomas has had a second half like they had in the first half. Harris, in all likelihood now playing in his last game in a Wake Forest uniform, a senior with better than 1,600 points in his career. And the Terps jogging it back down to the free throw line again. This is always a tough moment when you got a guy who's had a great career, but he knows his career is just his collegiate career is ending. Well, and this the stick to this to stay at Wake Forest. I mean, when, when things were going bad, uh, he stayed the course. 
And I think that is a true mark of his character and his belief in the university that he loves so much. In today's day and age, we see about 35% of every major Division I player transfer over the course of their career at some point in time. And C.J. Harris stayed and was loyal to Wake Forest. And it's a Wake Forest program with a lot of young players, and they figure to get better next year. Jeff Bizdelic, as we mentioned, has kind of been under the gun here locally from some from some corners, some fan groups who have taken out ads in a couple of local papers calling for his dismissal. Tough situation for a coach. Bizdelic in his third year as the coach at Wake Forest. Harris, the feed. Fisher open in the corner. And the shot's just not falling from the field or from the line in the second half for Wake. Final minute. Well, I think the young sung hero of this game, of course, we'll talk about Wells and how well he played, but Sean Howard in the second half made some pivotal shots, yep. played good defense on Harris, made life difficult for him at that end of the floor, and won't probably get the credit that he deserves for his effort. There he is on the drive, the kick to Faust. Shot clock down to seven. And they'll just take the shot clock violation with 14 seconds to go. And it'll be a big ovation for Harris as he walks off the floor for the final time as a Demon Deacon. Back up for the Deacon, 33, Aaron Rout, 3. Basket by Jones. 